Welcome to part four of this video series on the Solo Growth Model. I will be discussing the Golden Rule Savings Rate in this video. The Golden Rule Savings Rate is defined as the savings rate that maximizes consumption in a steady state. I will show you how to find the Golden Rule Savings Rate and explain the intuition behind the result. So to begin, let's first revisit where the savings rate enters the Solo Growth Model. So remember, it enters the solo growth model through investment, where here I've written down investment per capita. So investment per capita is equal to S, which is our savings rate, times GDP per capita. So investment in the model is just some constant fraction S of GDP per capita, where the savings rate is between 0 and 1. So the goal of the golden rule is to find the savings rate that maximizes consumption in a steady state, where recall through the resource constraint, consumption per capita is equal to GDP per capita minus investment per capita, where I can plug in S times YT for investment and then simplify this. I will end up with consumption per capita being equal to one minus S times GDP per capita. So consumption is basically what you have left over from production after you have invested. Before explicitly solving for the savings rate associated with the golden rule, let's first rule out a few extreme cases. In particular, let's rule out the cases where you only save and where you don't save at all. So if you only save, that implies that you're choosing a savings rate of S equals one. So what will consumption be in this case? By looking at our consumption equation, if S equals one, well, clearly consumption for any period in time is going to be equal to zero. So clearly it's also going to be the case that the steady state level of consumption per capita, where I will use a star to denote steady state variables, that must also be equal to zero. And that makes sense because you are only saving, which means you have nothing left over to consume. Now let's also consider the case where we don't save at all, where S equals zero. So looking at this consumption equation, you might think that, okay, well, we're not saving, so therefore we must only be consuming. Well, that's somewhat in the right track. However, what happens to GDP per capita if we don't save at all, specifically what happens to it in a steady state, because remember the golden rule refers to something in the steady state. Well, if S equals zero, let's figure out what happens to capital per capita in a steady state. And from there we can figure out what happens to GDP per capita in a steady state. So capital per capita in a steady state is equal to S times A, where A is total factor productivity, divided by delta, which is our depreciation rate, all raised to the power one over one minus alpha, where alpha is a parameter from our production function. In fact, let me go ahead and write down what our production function is for reference here. So I'm using a Cobb-Douglas production function. And in per capita terms, I will go ahead and write it as follows. So the production function F is a function of KT, which is equal to A times KT to the alpha. So this is the production function that I'm referring to. If you use this production function, this is what capital per capita will be in a steady state. So looking at this, if we set S equal to zero, it also follows that capital per capita is equal to zero. And intuitively what's going on here is if you're not saving anything and you have some positive depreciation rate, well, your capital will only depreciate over time and eventually it's going to be driven down to zero. So that implies in a steady state, if you have zero capital, well, you're also not going to be producing anything. Therefore, GDP per capita is equal to zero in a steady state. And looking at our consumption equation, Sure, you're not saving anything, but you have nothing to save to begin with in a steady state. So consumption per capita in a steady state is equal to zero in this case. So to summarize what we've just found here, if we do nothing but save, we end up with consumption per capita equal to zero. So clearly this cannot be associated with 
a golden rule because the goal of the golden rule is to maximize consumption, which in this case, we are not consuming anything. So it must be that our golden rule savings rate must be less than one. We need to leave something on the table for consumption. On the other hand, if all we do is consume and we don't save, well, eventually capital gets driven down to zero in a steady state. We don't produce anything. And similarly, consumption in a steady state is equal to zero. This clearly can't be associated with the golden rule either. So we need a savings rate that is strictly greater than zero. The question is, which savings rate will that be? Well, let's go ahead and figure that out now. So now let's go ahead and find the analytical solution for the golden rule savings rate. So specifically the problem that we are trying to solve here is maximizing consumption per capita in a steady state where we're choosing the savings rate, which we've already discussed that it's going to be strictly between zero and one. So just by looking at this objective function alone, well, we can't really solve anything because we don't even see S in this objective function. So to continue writing out this objective function, let's go ahead and write out consumption per capita in a steady state, which is equal to GDP per capita minus investment per capita. Furthermore, we know that in a steady state, investment is equal to depreciation. So investment is equal to the depreciation rate times capital per capita. We also know that our GDP per capita is equal to the production function evaluated at K star, and this is in a steady state. So let's go ahead and plug in these two values in for consumption. So we get C star is equal to the production function minus depreciation. And the reason why I'm writing it out this way is there's going to be a nice intuitive result that comes from writing it this way. So we're instead solving the following maximization problem where our objective function is the production function minus depreciation. And we don't have savings here again, but we do have capital in a steady state. So we're choosing K star in this case. So how do we maximize this function? How do we find the maximum? Well, recall that an extreme, at an extreme value, the derivative of a function is equal to zero. So simply take the derivative of this function and set it equal to zero. So we have the derivative of the production function minus delta, because the k drops out when we take the derivative, that is equal to zero. And this is known as our first order condition. We can use this condition to find the level of capital that's associated with the golden rule. And once we find that level of capital, we can then use that to find the golden rule savings rate that's associated with this capital. And another thing to note is that the derivative of the production function with respect to capital is also just the marginal product of capital. And if I move the depreciation rate to the other side, we find that our first order condition is the marginal product of capital is equal to the depreciation rate. And this is going to be useful when we analyze the solution graphically later. So now let's go ahead and use this condition to find the level of capital per capita that is associated with the golden rule. And from there, we can find the savings rate associated with the golden rule. So in our model, the marginal product of capital is just the derivative of the production function. And we're setting that equal to delta. Also recall that the production function that I'm using here is Kopp Douglas. So it is the total factor of productivity times capital raised to the power alpha. So taking the derivative of this with respect to capital, 
gives us alpha times a times k to the power alpha minus one, where I just use the power rule for this derivation, and that is equal to delta. So we're almost done, we just need to solve for k. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to divide each side by k to the alpha minus one, and divide each side by delta. So if I do that, I get alpha times a over delta is equal to one over k to the alpha minus one, where I can actually just rewrite this right hand side as k raised to the power of one minus alpha, where I've just multiplied this exponent by negative one, and that allows me to move this to the numerator. And now raise each side to the power one over one minus alpha, and that gives us the golden rule level of capital per capita equal to alpha times a over delta raised to the power one over one minus alpha. So this is what we were looking for. And we can actually use this to find the savings rate. So to find the savings rate, recall that in a steady state, investment is equal to depreciation. Also note that investment is just S times the production function. So that's S times F, and that's equal to delta K. So if I wanna find the golden rule savings rate, just solve for S here. So divide each side by the production function and I need to evaluate the right-hand side at the golden rule level of capital per capita, and that will give me the golden rule level of the savings rate that I need, and this in turn will maximize consumption. And if I actually wanna find what consumption is in this case, the golden rule consumption, so this is the maximum level of consumption that you can get if you're choosing a savings rate. This is just equal to one minus this golden rule savings rate times GDP per capita, which GDP per capita is just our production function. And again, I'm evaluating this at the golden rule level of capital. So to conclude everything, I'd like to show you a graphical illustration of the golden rule in action here. So first let's review what I've drawn here. So I have the depreciation line. So depreciation is equal to delta times KT. Um, I have the investment curve. Investment is equal to savings times GDP per capita, where GDP per capita is just the production function. Um, and then I also have GDP per capita, which basically has the same shape as the investment curve, but the investment is just S times GDP. So GDP must be above this one because S is between zero and one. We also have our steady state, which occurs when investment equals depreciation that is represented by the crossing point of the investment curve and the depreciation line. So this will give us on the vertical axis, investment per capita in a steady state. And if we evaluate GDP per capita at K star, that gives us GDP per capita in a steady state. And if we want to find consumption per capita, well, recall that consumption is just GDP minus investment. So that's going to be di the difference between Y star and I star. So this gap right here is C star. So that's just an evaluation of any given steady state. So what does the golden rule look like then? Recall that the golden rule is associated with the following condition, specifically that the marginal product of capital is equal to the depreciation rate. Also note that the marginal product of capital is the slope of the production line. And furthermore, the depreciation rate 
is the slope of the depreciation line. So we are at a golden rule when these two slopes are equal to each other and that will maximize the distance between production and investment. So let's go ahead and say that that particular point is right here. So this is not a very well drawn illustration. So let's just again say that at this point, the slope of the depreciation line is the same as the slope of the production function at that point. So this will, if we draw this down here, this will give us the horizontal coordinate associated with the golden rule level of capital per capita. But we need a steady state to occur at this point. So if we choose the appropriate savings rate, that will shift the investment curve downward. And so this is an investment curve where the savings rate is the golden rule level times the production function. And again, this will maximize the steady state level of consumption per capita. So to summarize this illustration and this video, suppose we are sitting at this steady state right here and policymakers decide that they want to choose a savings rate that maximizes consumption. Well, the savings rate associated with this steady state is too high. The reason being this condition of marginal productive capital being equal to the depreciation rate is not met. In fact, at this point, the marginal productive capital is actually less than the, than the depreciation rate, and that is due to diminishing returns to capital. So if we instead lower the savings rate, the marginal productive capital will increase, and eventually we will get to this point if we choose SG, and that will maximize consumption in a steady state, which is associated with the golden rule.